Good morning, YouTube. It's Monday, which means we are going behind the business of fantasy football. This is going to be a little bit of a different video than you're used to if you've been following along with the series, which is why I'm doing an intro in the first place, just to explain a few things to you. We're bringing on Scott Hansen of the NFL Network. Y'all know he runs Red Zone. If you're alive, if you're literally alive and you watch any sort of football, you've seen Scott Hansen. You probably watch Scott Hansen every Sunday afternoon on the NFL Red Zone. I'd go as far as saying he's he's a god in the fantasy football world. And, and being a god, your schedule tends to get a little hectic. So he only had about 15 or 20 minutes for me, which I am extremely grateful for. Very fortunate that he would even come on here to begin with. So the interview is a quick one. I hope it turns out well. I have not interviewed Scott yet. So I hope y'all enjoy. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys enjoy it. So I just wanted to give y'all a little explanation onto how this episode is going to go. We've got Scott Hansen for 20. If you enjoy, I just ask that you share it with other people that might also enjoy and find it valuable. Hit that thumbs up button if you do enjoy it. And that's it. So I love y'all. Stop yelling, tuck your shirts in and enjoy. All right, so we have Scott Hansen here. He is the host of the NFL Red Zone, and you could follow him at Scott Hansen on Twitter. Scott, you look very, very happy and chirpy as you normally do on the NFL Red Zone. Uh, <laughs> how, how's your day going so far? Uh, doing good. Good to be with you, Nick, albeit, you know, given the societal circumstances that we find ourselves in. Welcome to my dining room and my kitchen, by the way. The lights look very nice. I need to get me a, a couple it's, of those behind me. They were expensive. The yeah. <laughs> I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. We're here to talk a little bit about fantasy football. And as the audience knows, every Sunday we kick it off with my man, Scott Hansen over here. And you do such a great job of just keeping that show at such a high level energy and a high level of energy throughout the entire Sunday. I'd imagine, you know, when did it, when did you start as the host of the NFL Red Zone? How long ago? So we, yeah, we just finished our 11th season Jeez. on NFL Red Zone. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the original host of it. Um, some people who have direct TV will know that there's a similar product out there, the Red Zone channel, that's different than NFL Red Zone. The Red Zone channel's only on direct TV, and that's hosted by Andrew Siciliano. Okay. So anyone, anyone else, the majority of the country gets NFL Red Zone, and that's hosted by yours truly. So, okay. Yeah, 11 years, 11 years. 11 years, that's a long time. I'm assuming that the last couple of years where the popularity of NFL Red Zone has grown the ratings and stuff exponentially, is that is that a correct assumption? Yeah, you know, the amazing thing is our popularity has grown each and every year. This product that's so easily digestible for the fans, and it's like, it's really fun to watch, and it's grown so quickly over the last couple of years. Did you ever imagine when you first started 11 years ago that it would come to the point that it is now? Like, in your wildest dreams, did you imagine the entire country watching you every Sunday? Okay, now this is going to sound like bombast here. You did. Hyperbole. You knew it. And, and I can prove it. You go back and watch the initial on-camera hi, hello that I was doing on the very first episode of the very first season. I posted it on my social media. You can find it on there somewhere. And here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to week one of the 2009 NFL season, and welcome to NFL Red Zone. I'm your host, Scott Hansen. You're watching the first moments of the channel that we hope will change the way you watch football forever. Over the next six and a half hours, we're going to take you to every single game being played across the country live and in high definition. We will show you every big play as it happens, every touchdown from every game. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NFL Red Zone, the channel that we hope and we think will change the way you watch football forever. And it may have seen over, seemed over the top at the time, but I'm a football junkie. And when I saw behind the scenes, when we were working up to that first season, that first episode of that first season, I, I told our guys, I said, if we do this well, if we do it right, this is going to be the place where people are going to want to watch because it's it trims the fat off of every NFL game. No commercials, no standing around, you know, guys in the huddle for 35 seconds of the 40 second play clock. No, um, you know, ninth look at at the same replay over and over again. We'll give you a couple looks at the replay that they're reviewing, but we'll go somewhere else and we'll come back when they announce what just happened in Green Bay. So I said, if 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 we do this well, it's the channel that I would want to watch. So I think there are people that are like me out there. And so to answer your question, yeah, I thought there was a chance that it would do just that, change the way people watch football. 
Dude, it's so good. The, the product is so good. And like you said, I mean, I guess you just never wavered in the belief that it would, you know, continue to get better. And you guys have done a fantastic job of trimming the fat because I mean, in today's, you know, day and age, the product of football itself on TV definitely has improvements to be made between, you know, stoppages for referees and stoppages for commercials and advertising and stuff. And you guys deliver a product that the audience wants. And that's why it continues to grow. Let me ask you, though, with the, the growth of the audience, you're about to step on stage, right? It's 1 p.m. Eastern time. And, you know, 12.58, we'll say. Are, are you nervous or is this like, you know, are you in your zone? Is this like, yo, this is me. I'm about to run this show and like I'm good to go? That's a great question. Um, I don't get asked that very often. Uh, I only get nervous when I'm not prepared. And so I can't say that I've been nervous doing an NFL red zone in a while because I over prepare the heck out of everything. I am looking on the average NFL week on Tuesday night. Our excellent NFL network, NFL media staff sends me about a sends all of us, but but all of us people that are, are on TV about a yeah, like a 200 page packet of stats, facts, figures, storylines, everything that just happened in the week before and everything that we're looking forward to in the week ahead. And I dive into that. And then I have my own websites and procedures and spreadsheets that I make that just saturate my mind with everything that I might need to be talking about on Sunday, because it's seven hours ad libbed. We're just reacting to what we're seeing. So we don't know which one of the nine games in the early window is going to have the fantastic finish, the controversial call, the amazing play, the milestone, the record broken. You can be just about guaranteed one of those nine games or multiple of those nine games will have something like that in there, but we don't know which one. So if I am well prepared, if my tool belt is, I am prepped and ready, I go into the job being like, let's rock and roll. Because I'm not worried about like myself, and this took me a long time as a broadcaster to get over. I'm not worried about how people look at me. I'm worried about how people look at the show. Is it entertaining? Is it informative? Is it fun for the people? And if, and if I do, if I just put my focus on that, my own ego gets out of the way and, and let's rock, man. Let's rock. Yeah. That's so cool. So it's, it's ironic because with the product that you guys give, it's always flowing. Right. And you don't know what's going to happen. So the fact that you make it seem like you don't prepare by being prepared. I think the best, you know, you, you're a content creator pretty much at heart, right? And a lot of us, yeah. like, I'm on YouTube and a lot of the people in the fantasy space are bloggers or they do podcasting and stuff. And it's it's the same thing. It's just a way to get your value message, your prop out to the audience. And something I always say is like, you know, preparation is is so underrated. And the people that do the most preparation, the, pre- the people that do it best are always the one that make it look like they don't do any preparation. Right. Let, let me ask. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you this. Uh, who's your favorite NFL team? I'm a Falcons fan. Falcons fan. OK, let's just say Matt Ryan. If you took a stopwatch on an NFL Sunday of Matt Ryan and you started the stopwatch from the snap of the football until the whistle blew on that individual play, mm-hmm. four seconds, five seconds, whatever. And you, you accumulated that through, the, through the, the day. You know how long that stopwatch would have on it for Matt Ryan actually in a play? It'd be a few minutes Good point. Yeah. Okay, for an NFL game. How long did Matt Ryan work to get to that point? To have those three minutes of game action? Ten hours a day, every day for that entire week. Ten hours a day, every day for his whole life. For his whole life. He's he's probably, I, I mean, I don't know where he is in quarantine right now, but he might be doing some film study right now. These guys prepare and and are, like, the, the it is so layered and leveled and intense. Like, I wouldn't be doing it justice unless I went out there and I'm just talking about it. I don't have anyone trying to stop me from doing it. Matt Ryan's got guys trying to stop him <laughs> yeah. from executing his thing. I don't have anyone trying to stop Well, me you do. The, the other networks, the other people trying to take your job and get the viewers and stuff, man. It's, it's the same. Well, yeah. That, that's it. Okay. We, we do have, like, a competition, I guess, in that way. But in terms of no one's trying to cover up my mouth. Yeah, no one's yeah. trying to. So, in other words, my limits, for, from my standpoint, my limits are right in here. The, the, the limits are going to come from here because I've got the tools and the support to be able to 
help me do the best job that I can. And, and so no, I don't get nervous. I get angry when I make a mistake. I get upset at myself. I don't sleep well at night when I make a bad mistake on, on NFL red zone, but yeah, not, not, not nervous beforehand, not nervous beforehand. Very interesting. Just knowing, the, yeah. knowing the amount of eyeballs that are about to be on you. But I mean, you're right. Like anytime, you know, I prepare and I know going into a video that I have everything down packed, it kind of just free flows out of you. And it's just, it's second yeah. nature once you put that level of preparation. And so do not underestimate preparation. People always be prepared whenever you're about to yeah. make a piece of content. Let's, let's pivot. Hey, up. Yeah, go, go, no, go, I was go gonna, ahead. I was going to make one last, one last comment on that. No one who blows me up on Twitter, or Instagram or whatever for making a mistake. No one who blows me up, even if they're correct that I said, Aaron Rodgers threw 33 touchdowns last year and he actually threw 34. Mm -hmm. Okay. No one that hits me up has been perfect in their life. Right. No one, no one. Mm -hmm. So I just say, just be real careful when other people critique. I, I'm not above critique. I let my critics be my coaches when they have a valid point. I, I can put my ego aside and listen to them, even if they're telling me in foul language that, you know, mm -hmm. that, I, that I suck and that, and that, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I should be fired, whatever, all this other type of stuff. Hey, if you've got a point, I'll take the, I'll take the good meat of that point and I can put the, the, the acid, the, the, you know, the, uh, emotional constipation that people <laughs> exhibit on social media and I could push that to the side. And I just remember there's no one watching the show that's perfect. There's no one hosting the show that's perfect. There's no one playing in the games that I'm covering that has never made a mistake. And, and not that that excuses me to make a mistake, but it does take the pressure off a little bit. If I give it everything I've got and I let it fly and I've been prepared, I didn't take any shortcuts and I'm passionate and engaged about what I'm doing. I can live with the results. That's a good way to look at it. A good perspective. And just as, as a hardcore fan, you don't suck and you shouldn't be fired. And I don't know if there's anyone, <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone in the country that could do what you do as well as you do. So that's awesome. Now I do want to talk about fantasy football a little bit because yeah. I would imagine, I don't know how serious the conversations are for you guys behind the scenes about how much of fantasy football needs to be incorporated into the product you're putting out. And you do a good job throughout your shows of being, you know, catering towards the audience and saying things like, you know, if you've got him on your fantasy team, X, Y, Z. But I'm sure like you guys have seen the growth of the fantasy sports industry and just fantasy football in general. I'd imagine like a, a large percentage of your audience is watching it for fantasy football, right? Like, so can you give me a, a little like peek behind the scenes maybe of conversations that you guys have had around fantasy football, if you've had any? Yeah, definitely. Um, we uh, we serve a lot of masters on NFL Red Zone because certainly fantasy football is one of the big fuels of of the popularity of our show. Uh, there are folks, the folks out in the desert, as they like to say, mm -hmm. you know, that that have have a couple of shekels on the game. They they they're watching NFL Red Zone to be able to see all the different games they have action in. And then there are just football junkies that just want to know and see everything else that's going on. If, if, if the Falcons are your favorite team, I get it. You're going to watch every snap of the Falcons games. But then if the Falcons are your favorite team, I can almost guarantee your second favorite team is your fantasy football team. And you can't watch one game to watch your fantasy team. Nope. You got to watch all of them. And NFL Red Zone is the perfect way to do it. So we before we start a show, so I'm in Los Angeles. The games kick off at 10 a.m. Pacific time for us. And we have a production meeting at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And in that production meeting, the whole staff and I, we run through all the stats, facts, and figures, stuff that we that we think could happen today, stuff that uh, you know our milestones we're keeping an eye on, things that happened last week that might come into play this week and whatnot. And fantasy is always a part of that. Virtually everybody on the staff plays fantasy football. We have, there's an NFL red zone league, uh, that, that, uh, is created among the uh, people who work on our staff. Uh, so yeah, fantasy, we're totally mindful of, you'll see that we'll take on the, on the screen, you know, we do, it's called a ribbon or a, or a, uh, there's other names yeah. for it where we just run fantasy stats, you know, throughout the day. And I, I've been the one who pushed actually one thing I don't like Sometimes in the fantasy stats, when it says rushing leaders, if there was Thursday night football 
and w- whatever. Uh, Zeke Elliott ran for, you know, a, 111 yards yeah. in, in a Thursday night football Dallas game. It says rushing leaders and it says Ezekiel Elliott. And we're in the first quarter of the early window of the games. I'm like, guys, get that off of there. Yeah. People already know that Zeke had a hundred, a buck 11 on, on Thursday night. They want to know right now. Okay. Right now. What does Saquon Barkley have in the first quarter? Oh, he's got 55 yards in the first quarter. Okay, now we're talking. That's like that's funny. He should be the fantasy leader. You know what I mean? There's little little subtle things we do for for fantasy sake that hopefully adds to the enjoyment of, of NFL red zone. No, you're right. Like I've noticed that before too. It's and especially it's like the afternoon games, rushing leaders. Like you want to know, you know, who are the leaders in the first quarter of the four o'clock games, but you got to get through seven of the guys in the one o'clocks so at Thursday nights and things like that. So like, how would a, a chain? You know, working at a big company you would suggest it, but how would it, how would a change like that actually occur? <laughs> like, I'm sure there are a lot of loopholes yeah. you got to go through and it's not perfect. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and thank you for knowing that because a lot of times on Twitter, people hit me up and they just think that I just have every switch in front of me and you're every like, employee at the network. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're doing NFL red zone replay right now, right. Mm-hmm. In coronavirus programming, you can flip on NFL red zone and relive the 2019 season right now. People are already hit me up. Why don't you run 2012? That was my favorite <laughs> season. Why don't you run 2016? And I'm like, guys, I don't sit here. I don't have a bunch of, I don't have a big hard drive right here where I'm just like from my house. I'm just going like this. So um, yeah, it, there are a lot of procedures and we have excellent producers, coordinating producers, graphics folks. Uh, and and w- when a change happens, uh, what I always like to say is this, I don't care who comes up with the idea. I don't care if it's the guy who's talking on TV who comes up with the idea. I don't care if it's the producer. I don't care if it's the person who empties the trash baskets at the end of the night. If somebody has a good idea and we can execute it, let's do it. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And I just hope to be able to, you know, cut through the red tape of, like you said, a big company where people can be a little proprietary, uh, proprietary and territorial and, and not adjust to change. The change should be fueled by this and this alone. Does it add value? to our customers? Does it add value to the fans enjoyment and understanding of the broadcast? And if the answer is yes, there are no other questions. Scott, you're, you're an animal. First off, I want to say, and it's been, (laughs) it's been one of the, the things I've, I've enjoyed watching in our industry because players like NFL and ESPN and Yahoo had sort of a monopoly over the space. But as you're seeing a lot of the smaller brands and companies realize there's an opportunity within the fantasy football industry they are able to make these changes at a much quicker pace and you're seeing the level uh, the the playing field level itself a little bit but at the end of the day i mean this is the nfl red zone that we're talking about here and the product that you guys give out is incredible and you're not the guy who works on obviously the app of the nfl fantasy and things like that man i wish we had more time to dive in i know you're on a very very strict schedule your pr guy was very adamant about the 48 mark and we are the 58 mark and we are there right now scott uh, well I, I appreciate that there are other people who are demanding my time it's not like i, I want to cut this short no Trust no me. i don't take it personally whatsoever I, I completely understand you're extremely busy in my eyes you're like uh america's uh ivan drago in a sense pre pre <laughs> pre-fight you're fighting for all of us out here and we're all rooting for you man so scott keep doing your thing uh nfl red zone as he said is currently replaying every sunday from the 2019 season with airings at 8 a.m 3 p.m 10 p.m eastern each and every day. Scott, thank you so much for your time. Hopefully uh, we can get back on here when you've got a little bit more free time and wrap it up. I appreciate you, Nick. Good to be with you. Be safe, man. Later.